Hi everyone, welcome to uh, another episode of uh, Automotive Diagnosis YouTube channel. Uh, I made a couple of videos about the network, about the CAN bus and uh, Lean bus. Uh, and right after that, I received some comments and some messages uh, about the K line as well. Uh, so in some comments, uh, you asked me what what are the differences or similarities between the K line and Lean bus. So that's why I'm making this video today to explain uh, the K line uh, and the similarities and the differences between K line and the Lean bus. So if you want to uh, watch the Lean bus to get uh, more information about this network. Uh, you can find the link in the description. I will also add the link for the CAN bus network as well, so you can watch that video as well if you are interested. Okay, let's start uh, to talk about the similarities between uh, these two network. So first of all, uh, these two networks, uh, K-Line and Linbus, they both use uh, single wire communication. Uh, so we have uh, in, in CAN bus, we have two wires. We have a pair of twisted wires. Uh, so that's normally called CAN high and CAN low. But for the K-Line and for the Linbus, we only have one single wire for, for the communication. The other thing is they have similar voltage level between 0 to 12. And the third one is uh, they almost have similar uh, data rate. So uh, Limbus, so the rate in the Limbus is uh, around 20 kilobit per second. And in K-Line is a bit less than that, around 10 kilobit per second. Uh, that's why I'm saying they have almost similar data uh, rate. They are categorized as uh, low speed net networks, uh, but still uh, they're going to uh, transfer the information uh, much faster than the normal uh, hard wire. And the last one is uh, both of these two networks, uh, they use uh, master one master multiple slaves network because as you might know uh, we have uh, we have the CAN communication as a multi master network uh, but in K line and in Limbos uh, there is just one master and multiple slaves so these are all the similarities between uh, these two network and uh, uh, each one of these two networks are designed to transfer the information faster than uh, the normal hard wire. And at the same time, they help to minimize uh, the amount of wiring that we need for uh, this communication. Uh, so what about the differences? If, is there any difference between these two? Yes. The first thing is uh, K-Line is designed for the communication between diagnostic tools and ECUs. So that's why normally you, you will find one end of the K-Line in OBD2 connector. But Linbus is designed for another thing. Linbus is normally subsystem serial communication. So normally on many systems, we will see one sample uh, in this video. Uh, on many systems, Linbus is designed for communication between one control unit, which is going to be a, a master node uh, with uh, some sensors or actuators, which are actually slave nodes. That control unit can be communicating with other networks as well, like the CAN bus. But at the same time, for controlling uh, uh, the sensors or actuators, uh, it can use LIN bus. So this is the main uh, difference at the beginning. On the other hand, K-Line uh, has been replaced by another type of networks, generally CAN bus. So uh, I'm going to show you some examples uh, about 
uh, about about this matter, how uh, K-Line has been replaced by, for example, Canvas. So at the beginning, K-Line uh, used uh, for uh, communication between many control units and scan tools. But right now, many of uh, control units are using the Canvas for this communication. So that's why I'm saying the K-Line has been replaced by uh, Canvas. But what about the Limbus? No, Limbus has been widely used. So uh, every day you see uh, Limbus in some other systems. Uh, I'm going to show you some systems right now, right after this one, to see uh, many to see that many uh, systems are using the Limbus because uh, generally Limbus is a, a low-cost network, and at the same time. It's really uh, useful for uh, less critical uh, systems or less critical information. That's why for uh, controlling uh, some actuators or for communicating between ECUs and uh, sensors, uh, sometimes Limbus is, uh, is used. So this is one example about the systems uh, uh, which use lean network. For example, sunroof, uh, power door lock system, headlight, uh, generally adaptive front lighting system as well. Uh, on power seat, we have the lean network, we have the wiper and rain sensor. Sometimes for the communication between the rain sensor and body control module, we have lean network. And parking as a system that we're gonna see in this video, you will see how uh, sensors are connected to the control unit uh, using the lean network. So as I said earlier, you can find the video in the description to uh, to watch everything about the lean network. So this is just one example. As you see, smart parking as a system. So in this system, we have uh, one control unit right here. And obviously we have some sensors uh, uh, on the front bumper, some uh, rear bumper. So on smart parking assist uh, control unit, uh, as you see right here, we have one uh, lean network right here, which is called lean one and the other one lean two. So lean one is connected to, as you see, it's connected to all these sensors. Okay, front uh, smart parking assist sensors. So one, two, three, four sensors right here. And it's going to go to the rear bumper as well, which uh, which will be connected to another four sensors. So generally, eight sensors are connected to lean one. So you can imagine uh, this lean is going to reduce the amount of wiring uh, hugely. And at the same time, uh, it's going to communicate with the sensors faster than a normal wire. And the other one, lean two, this one is connected to the side sensors which are going to uh, monitor the space you need for parking the uh, car. So this lane is connected to side sensors uh, at the front and to another two side sensors on the rear bumper. Totally, this one is connected to four sensors. So we can have a look at the second page of the wire, uh, second page of the wire diagram right here. You see the other sensors and two side sensors on here as well. So this is one example of the uh, lean network. So all these sensors are slave nodes and the control module itself is a master node. So we have one master node and multiple slave nodes. Uh, for example, if we focus on lean one, lean one only is using one wire. Okay. And this wire is shared between the other uh, components or other slave nodes as well. But what about uh, the K-Line? So K-Line is for communication between the ECUs and your diagnostic tool. So your diagnostic tool will be connected to the OBD2 connector right here. So there should be one pin, at least one pin for the K-Line. And as you see, pin number seven right here is for the K-Line. So normally pin number six and 14, these two are for the CAN high and CAN low. And pin number seven is for the K line. So when you connect your scan tool, your scan tool is gonna communicate with ECUs uh, using the K line. 
But generally saying that uh, pin number seven is for the K line is not going to be enough because I've seen some companies uh, which normally have more pins for the K line because uh, they use different pins uh, for uh, communication between the ECUs and some specific ECUs. So we can have a look at uh, those ones. For example, this one. So this is one example of OBD2 connector. As you see, we have pin number 6 and 14 in here, again for the CAN high and CAN low. But let's see how many pins we have for the K line. This is the first one, pin number 7 as usual, as I said earlier. This one is for a PCM communication. So this one is designed only for uh, your scan tool communication uh, with uh, PCM. But next to that pin number eight is another K-line for brake system, ABS or ESP control module. And there is another K-line right here, pin number 12 for body K-line. As you see, so uh, this company has used more than one, more than one K-line for the communication between uh, ECUs and your diagnostic tools. So why why is this so important to know how many K lines you have? Because if your scan tool doesn't connect to that control module, that specific control module, so after checking the control module itself to make sure it's connected to the power and to the ground, there could be some problem on, on the K line. So you should make sure if your scan tool is communicating uh, to that control module using the can higher can low or using the K-line and which pin is exactly relevant to uh, that control unit. So for this specific car, we have the, P, uh, we have the PCM K-line on number seven, uh, ABS ESP on number eight, and body K-line on number 12. Let's see another example. So this is another scenario. So we have again, pin number six and 14. Uh, when you're looking at the numbers, uh, just uh, be careful because the, the numbers on the OBD, OBD2 connector are written just a small up here. These big numbers are uh, on the uh, DLC itself. They are for the ETM. So this company provides two different numbering. So the numbers that you will have on the OBD2 connectors are uh, from here. You see this arrow pointing to the OBD, all these small numbers at the top and these are small numbers at the bottom they are uh, what we are after on the obd2 connector so as you see pin number six and 14 they are for the can high and can low as usual but pin number seven that used to be for the pcmk line is empty it doesn't have any pin anymore right what does that mean it means on this model a pcm is communicating with the scan tool using the can high and can low using the can boss so there is no more K line on this model for PCM communication with the scan tool. But pin number eight still uh, is communicating with Shazzy, Shazzy for, for the brake system. And pin number 12, right here, this is a small number at the bottom. Please don't be confused with these big numbers. Look at the small numbers as you see on the uh, wind diagram, which is pointing to OBD2. So pin number 12 still uh, is body K line. And if we, uh, if we chase this wire, we see it's connected to the IPM. IPM is actually your BCM, body control module, and uh, the interior fuse box integrated into one unit. And we have auto headlamp leveling device, AC control panel, and adaptive front lighting module. All these units are connected to this body k on pin number 12. So if you don't have communication between your scan tool and all these units, you've got to check this wire. And the last case right here is uh, another type of OBD2 connector. As you see, again, we need to uh, look at these small numbers at the top and at the bottom for the OBD2. You see again, pin number six and 14 is still for the CAN bus. Pin number seven, uh, which used to be for PCM K line is empty. Pin number eight, which used to be for ABS K line, that one is empty as well. So it means 
those two units, uh, PCM and ABS, they are uh, connected to the CAN bus for diagnostic purposes. All right, for diagnostic purposes. But we still have the body K line pin number 12 right here for uh, communicating with this unit, immobilizer system or a smart key, whatever uh, is uh, on the car, body control module, AC. Uh, so these units are diagnosed with, uh, with the K line. So as you see, the numbers can be different because I've seen many cases that everyone says only pin number seven is for the K line. But as you see here, uh, there might be some differences based on on the car that you are performing the diagnostics. So it's really important to check the uh, wiring diagram before coming to any sort of uh, conclusion. All right, thank you very much everyone for watching. Uh, again, if you want uh, to get more information about the Lean Boss or uh, Cam Boss, you can find the link in the description and get more ideas about those networks.